Did you miss the Costco irons? Well, this could be your second chance because I don't think we're ever gonna see the Kirkland Signature Costco irons ever again, especially with the lawsuit happening with TaylorMade. However, you can get a club that's probably the closest you'll ever come to those clubs and you can get them just a little bit cheaper. But are they any good? That's what we're gonna test today. So the clubs I'm playing are the SMT 579s. These came out of the exact same factory that the Kirkland Signature clubs were made in. And if you look at these clubs, they look strikingly similar. Now there are some differences that we're going to cover here in today's video. And again, we'll find out if these things perform anywhere near as good as those Kirkland irons for the price. $419, you can get yourself a full set. I opted to go heads only and I fitted it with shafts that were closest that I could find in terms of both value and in terms of quality to what is on the Kirkland signatures. I also put a Golf Pride grip on there as well. Lambkin cross lines the standard grip on the Kirkland signature and you can do that as well. But I was able to build these clubs for just under $400. But if you wanted them ready to go, $419 on the website, you can get a set of these SMT 579. So it's actually cheaper than the Kirkland signature. First hole, short par four, our over under by the way, plus or minus two today. Now looking at these irons from the back, you would think they're pretty much exactly the same, other than the finish is gonna be a little bit different here with the SMT 579s. You've got more of a polished chrome look on the Kirkland signatures, while the SMT 579s have more of a brushed finish with a couple of polished attributes. Now, when you actually look down at it from a dress, that's when things look very different. If you remember, the Kirkland signatures had hardly any offset, hardly any offset. I think if you're gonna have a club that's suited more towards the average golfer, you're gonna want a little bit more offset. And looking down at these, you see something else, the top line, very, very thick compared to the Kirkland signature. So this is a different looking club at a dress than those Kirkland signatures for 121, sure. 121, I'm gonna go pitching wedge and I haven't even hit this club or most of the clubs in this bag. I did try the seven iron at the range, but apart from that, I haven't hit these things, so we're getting our actual first taste here together. This hole always plays a little bit longer, especially in the morning, but it's also a little bit, a little bit elevated, this green. I'm going for the middle of the green. And I may hit the left side of the green. Let's see if we hit it. Ooh, did we? Might be a little long. Tell you what, the feeling off the club face, pretty darn nice. But there's one thing about these clubs I noticed I don't like. And I noticed it with the seven iron on the range here this morning warming up. I hope I'm not exaggerating when I say these could be the worst sounding clubs I've ever heard. <laughs> they have this clicky sound to them. They almost seem fake to me. I really, really don't like it at all. If I'm having any struggles in my game right now, it is the chipping. Let's see if we can knock this tight though. That's pretty good, settle. Ooh, it ran out. Whoa. So we've got four, four and a half, maybe, yeah, maybe five feet coming back even. I thought that was gonna be pretty darn good, but hey, we gotta put it par. And because it's morning, I actually see the line pretty darn well based on where that ball rolled out to. And I feel very confident with this putter right now, especially from this distance. And that's why. All right, we're heading to two. Oh, hold on. All right, we'll get a sense of what these clubs can do out of the rough here since I tugged that drive a little bit. The lie is decent, not great. I've got 155, I've got eight iron in hand, so I'll also test distance here. Water right, bunker left. We gotta hit it central. I did that. Is it gonna get there though? It's a good direction. Ooh, it's hard to see. I kind of lost it in the sun. Now, these clubs I would characterize from the shots I've seen so far as mid trajectory. They're not gonna be super high and penetrating. That has to do with the loft of these clubs, which are a little stronger than those Kirkland signatures. And Something I actually appreciate because, again, I think the Kirkland signatures missed the mark a little bit on who these clubs are for. They made clubs for really low handicappers who always get fit for clubs. These are clubs that are more for your every man out there 
or every lady, as the case may be. We are short, by the way. We're about, oh, hmm, five yards short. So I hit that 150. Not bad, not great. Got a little stuck in the rough there with that little bigger sole. These clubs are gonna have a little bigger sole in addition to the bigger top line as well. And uh, definitely it showed there a little bit. You're just not gonna get quite the same turf interaction you will get from the Kirkland signatures with these clubs. But I've got a very makeable up and down here. <laughs> Hopefully we can do that. We are 0 for 2 in terms of greens and regulations so far. Let's see if we can improve on that here as we go. Not a lot of people putt from off the green and they should because a bad putt beats a bad chip 10 times out of 10. Unless you putt it that poorly. Woo, a little thicker than I thought here, which means I've got now seven feet here for my par and it should have been a lot better. Come on, whew, that putter's saving me right now. All right, two holes, two pars, zero greens and regulations. We are going to the third, which is a par three, our first chance for an ace. Still don't have one. Do you have one? Let me know down in the comments. If you did, let me know where, what club you were hitting. I always love to live vicariously through you guys. <laughs> Now, when you buy budget clubs, there are some drawbacks. And let me tell you about a big one that we found here with the SMT 579s. As you know, I work with my pal Adam over at Mobile Club Maker Elite Fit Golf, and I had him build these clubs for me. And he told me that the lies and the lofts were off by as much as two degrees from what's stated on the website with these clubs. And that is a big issue when you buy a club that's made in a factory from, now nah, let's just say not one of the big names out there or maybe they're not getting the same quality control as the big names for sure. And uh, luckily he was able to get these as close to spec as possible, but I do wanna let you know that they did not come the way they were stated on the website. And that's a big thing. You should always check with any direct to consumer brand. All right, we've got 150 on the button here, which means we get to hit that eight iron again. Now what I'm gonna do a little bit differently, I do feel a little wind in my face here, by the way, which is probably why we came up short. But what I'm gonna do a little bit differently here is hit more of a fade shot because I wanna test the workability of these clubs and because this tree line would get in the way of my draw as well. So it's the shot I gotta play. Let's see if we can hit a little fade out of this thing and carry it all the way to the green this time. Well, it's definitely fading pretty good. I would say I hit that one slightly toe side so I don't think we're gonna get there in terms of all the distance I needed out of that one but let's see where we finished. Well, yeah, we definitely came up short there and short by a pretty good way. And that always signals to me forgiveness of a club. I don't know if you can see my ball, but it's down there about 15, maybe, uh, let's call it 18 yards short. Okay, so that was pretty penalizing for where that strike was. It was a little toe side. It wasn't horrible though either. And uh, that's why when I review these clubs, I'm telling you everything I'm seeing because I want you to know all of the variables that are coming into play here. All right, this time I am gonna be chipping it. Let's see if we can do a little better than the first two. Settle. Okay, better. My conversion rate is really good right now with this putter. Let's keep it up. Yep. Dead center. We got a little bonus par three for you here today because this normally par four hole has the county doing some construction, laying some new water pipes. And that gives us another chance to hit an iron here. We've got 173. This would normally be a seven iron for me, so we're gonna try it and see if we can get there. This loft, by the way, on the seven iron is going to be 30 degrees. You've got 20 degrees at the four iron and up at the pitching wedge, 44 degrees. So this may be a set where you're gonna need to carry four wedges, probably I would say 48, 52, 54, 58 would probably be the best case scenario. Now they do offer a 49 degree gap wedge in this set and you can purchase that as well. All right, we got a lot of water on the right there. We got a bunker on the left that we should be able to carry. I'm gonna hit my normal draw here. Let's see if we get the distance out of this thing. More of a crosswind on this hole, so it should be pretty true in terms of distance. Oh, I hit it off the toe. Is it going to get there? 
Are we gonna pay the price? Oh, we just carried. So again, in terms of forgiveness, there's a lack of it. That's, I guess, the best way I can describe it because if you've got something like other clubs I've tested this year, stuff like the Dynapower Forged, something like a Ping G430, something like even a Tacoma 101, gonna be considerably more forgiving than these clubs in terms of miss hits. I'm now 0 for 4 in terms of greens and regulation. And while again, that was not the best swing of my life, I feel like with a pretty decent sized green here, I should have hit it. Tough side hill lie here. I'm lucky that it's not wet, honestly. So I'll take it. Where's that roll out we've been getting? I just hit it too high. All right, well, we're gonna have to get some magic here with the putter to save the SMT irons this hole. And did not hit that one. <sighs> Thank God this putter can work or else I would have had a double bogey there. We're getting ourselves into trouble. Let's start hitting some shots. We gotta get that stroke back. Maybe we can go birdie here on the next par five. Saw it. Never saw it. Oh, it's right down the middle. <laughs> right into the sun here. We've got a ball here in the middle of the fairway. And on this par five, I'm gonna lay up with this four iron, give us a chance to see how these things perform. Oh, I push it off to the right. Again, lower trajectory than I'd like to see. It wasn't good for direction, but it really wasn't good for trajectory either. Out of a four iron. Again, these clubs just seem to be lacking that bit of forgiveness that most of us need. If we're not elite tour players, oh, we're gonna need some forgiveness. And these clubs, so far at least, don't seem to be as forgiving even as the Kirkland signatures. All right, we find ourselves in a familiar place here, which is, not on target, unfortunately. <laughs> We're 101 yards here. I've got a little more club that I need, pitching wedge. We've got to carry this tree. I'm going for the meat of the green here. Settle, 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 settle. Whew. I haven't had one tap in today, have I? Nope. Okay. Well, we are two over and quite frankly, it's exactly what I deserve because we have yet to hit a green in regulation. And I've really yet to hit a shot I felt super pleased with, to be quite honest with you. Now, maybe I'm not swinging my best, but I think I'm swinging good enough to be hitting a couple of these greens and we're just not scoring either. So we're right on the bubble here with some hard finishing holes. We've got a dog leg right par four to start. Got to get off the tee well. That's perfect. Does adversity breed excellence. Let's find out. We've got 122 pitching wedge in our hand. I'm in a slight little divot here, an older divot. Let's see if we can get there. Okay, decent strike there. Again, when you hit them in the middle, they feel pretty darn good. And that's long. Unbelievable. We are 0 for 6. That is criminal. Criminal, I, I don't know what it is. There's a big difference. There's such a big difference between hitting him in the middle and hitting him anywhere but the middle in terms of distance here, that it makes getting your distances very difficult. Should be an easy up and down, but we shouldn't be having to get up and down every hole either. Go, 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 go. I've yet to have a tap in today too. Gotta study the ship, come on. Thank goodness for this putter. Well, I could easily be four or five over right now the way that I'm striking the ball. However, we're only plus two and we're heading to a par three to get another chance for that ace, that elusive ace. I would just take a birdie right now, to be quite honest with you. I would take a tap in par even. That would be nice. <laughs> oh, well, I guess this hole is closed. You can see the uh, tractor there working in the background. So I guess we're only getting eight holes of golf here today. Well, just imagine I had a par. Well, imagine I had a par. All right, we're heading to a par five. Now, people always ask me about the shoes I'm wearing. Today, I'm wearing the True Lynx wear, 
really enjoying these shoes in terms of comfort on the course. They look stylish as well. Not making me play better right now, but they look good. Ah, there we go. The driver's working today. All right, we're in the rough here, but not too bad. The lie is decent. So we're gonna go four iron again here. See if we can advance this ball, get ourselves into wedge range. Keep going, baby. Keep going. Get lower trajectory out of this club. Just not getting the height you'd see out of other irons in this category. And uh, yeah, I mean, not much else to say. We're gonna try to end strong here though. For us to reach our goal of plus or minus two, we cannot put another bogey on the scorecard. This shot's critical. All right, here's the scoop. We've got 110 yards. We've got that wind. <laughs> feel like it's following me in my face all day today. The best we've had was a side wind and uh, just the time of day we played, I guess. Pitching wedge in hand, we've yet to hit a green. It would really be sweet to do it. I think we may have. We did. We did. We did. Sometimes it's just the little victories. I'll take that one. We have our first legitimate birdie opportunity of the day. I do want to note this though. This is the pitch mark here, which I will repair, of course. And that's where it rolled out, about 20 feet, I'd say. So first time I actually got a chance to look at stopping power and not impressive in the least. And that's probably why we missed a couple other greens today where we did hit the green and they rolled off the green. This hung on, but it didn't hang on by much. It only hung on by Four inches? It's a par. We got one hole to play. Let's see if we can wrangle that elusive birdie. And after I hit this drive, I'm gonna rank these clubs. All right, we got another one in the fairway. So again, today the driver and putter have been pretty darn good, but uh, yeah, these irons, it's time to rank them. So as you know, I like to rank irons on five criteria. First one is distance. Distance for me is mm, middle of the road to poor. And so I'm gonna give these a three out of five. That may be generous, but I'm giving these a three out of five. In terms of forgiveness though, I will not be so generous. When you hit them in the middle, they go pretty straight. But if you don't, you're gonna lose a lot of distance. You're not gonna get the forgiveness that most of us need. And for me, I'm giving these a two for forgiveness. In terms of workability, these actually are a pretty workable club, and that's usually the trade-off. When you have a more forgiving club, you can't move the ball left and right as much, so they're actually gonna get a decent score here for me in terms of workability of four out of five. If we talk about aesthetics, these fall very short for me. In terms of the looks category, they're too big up at the top end. In terms of the feel category, feel good out of the center, do not feel good at all out of the toe and heel. And then if you talk about sound, sound is maybe the worst I've ever come across. So I'm struggling not to give these a one. I'm gonna go ahead and give these a two. Again, maybe a generous score, but they're getting a two from me. In terms of value, absolutely great. Uh, in terms of the price, but in terms of what you're getting for the price, not so great. Not so great at all. And so for me, again, maybe a generous score, but I'm gonna give these a three. I believe of all the clubs I've tested this year, this score right here is going to be the lowest that I've given. And honestly, these are the worst performing clubs that I've played all year. There's so many good clubs out on the market. I cannot recommend these ones for you as a replacement for the Kirkland signatures. But what I would say is take a look at those Wilson Staff Dyna Powers. Those things are incredible. The Dyna Power Forged in particular, much better club than this one. I would also be looking at Calais, Tacomo, in this price range, I think you're gonna have a much better club for the money. Guys, I hope you enjoy this review. For more honest reviews, do subscribe to the channel and make sure to turn on your notifications because you do not wanna miss a review. If you missed this review about these clubs, you might not be feeling so good about your purchase. So make sure to hit the notifications. All right, here we go. Pitching wedge in hand. We're looking right at it. Let's see if we can hit this green. It's a pretty good one. We might get that birdie yet. If it stops, oh, it rolled right off the green. Oh, come on. Oh, I would absolutely be looking at Maltby. I forgot about Maltby. Stu, Stu, I'm sorry. <laughs> Definitely Maltby. Definitely Maltby. I cannot believe. If you see where that ball landed, it was literally 
a couple yards from the pin, a couple feet from the pin maybe. If we get up and down here, this round was a miracle of the short game. Settle, settle. Unbelievable. I love this putter. Go check out that review. That's right here. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll catch you back here next time on another edition of Let's Play Through.